a screenshot taking tool should be something that you use instantly, like a quick draw, you know, like a cowboy that has this pistol on his hip and they just is able to use it immediately. Uh, otherwise, you would not be able to take screenshots. You would not be initiating the screenshot taking procedure. You would not be communicating using those screenshots. And of course, the, one of the best tools in the world, <laughs> at least, uh, at least, I uh, don't know, from a professional perspective, is Snagit. So Snagit belongs to TechSmith, and this is where they have all of those screenshot editing, uh, like Camtasia or everything, Camtasia. Uh, and everything that related to professional video production or something like that. And today we're going to review Snagit, the free version, the free trial version, just to determine the baseline here, what the pros are doing. Because this thing, I didn't, I don't think I ever heard about a, school, a tool that is considered more professional than this. So it's better be good. Now, who am I and what do I do? I take screenshots professionally for documentation production. Hundreds of, hundreds of screenshots every day, so it means that the speed is of essence, editing them, putting them in the right place, saving them for later use. Everything should be automated as much as possible, seamless as possible. So I would be focusing on create, creating the content and not uh, maintaining my screenshots with uh, every breath that I take. I use it to communicate with everybody using emails. I ask everybody else to send me uh, emails with screenshots. So screenshots, screenshots are my daily thing. So let's see what do I expect from screenshot tool. So first of all, I want to configure it in a way that serves my needs. Out of the box usually doesn't serve you in professional capacity. So we are starting right with that. Then we'll see how the capturing screenshot works for us, how the editing is doing, uh, what exporting options do we have? Can we export it immediately to the cloud? Can we uh, save it uh, automatically with some increase in numbers or specifying where the screenshot was taken? How good it is for document development in, in, in general terms? I mean, can I work with this tool all day or is it like one time tool for occasional screenshot? And are there any extra features that would allow me to use this tool uh, for more things rather than having a tool for every dedicated thing that we have? So right here, I installed the TechSmith Snagit and what puts it uh, aside from everybody else that I tried? Sign in to start trial. Sign in to start trial. Okay, we're gonna try that in one second. But uh, look at that. I mean, some of them are really sucky. I mean, the, uh, some of them are really bad. Some of them are really good. I mean, this is a very, very decent heavy tool. Greenshot, can, you can work years with that thing and produce high quality documentation with that thing. And still, uh, it's 1.7 megabytes. Sharex, the main competitor for Snagit, and it is in my mind, eight, almost eight megabytes, 324 megabytes of what? I don't know, let's find out. So let's see the sign in, what can I do with the sign in? Uh, can I do it with my personal email? I don't know, but let's keep that part. So after a couple of minutes where you give them your details and try to do two-factor authentication, and they ask you what are you going to use the tool for and that's it you sign in and you can close this tab to go back to snagit and so this is it this is how snagit looks like so uh we will start with configuration yeah. so let's see share preferences what's share preferences file email ftp program management program clipboard Okay, and then a printer, Evernote. Okay, so those are preferences for sharing. Uh, and then online tutorial, software key, manage custom program destinations. I don't know what it means by that. Presets, capture preferences. Okay, here we go. So run Snagit when it starts, of course, not capture window and one click. Okay, Snagit theme, light and dark, automatically check for updates, don't care, send anonymous usage data, we don't want to do it. Capture, hide Snagit when capturing, of course, open screenshots copied from system to, I don't know, show magnifier, okay, simplified crosshairs, not very, not interesting, video recording, automatically start video recording, show video countdown, so show quick controls for full screen recordings, video quality, yeah, basically, quality settings 
scale captures down to full HD, enable webcam, okay. Hotkeys, height, snag it, repeat last, okay, right, last region, it's very good. Uh, video capture, video capture start, let's resume, resume, so we are going to say add to, like we did it before. So video capture, start, pause, resume, R2. And it's going to be shift to, to stop. Those are going to be our hotkeys, although I hope not to use them. So uh, very limited functionality over here. Okay, this night. Resume hotkey is in use by other program. Oh, right, right, exit stop draw. Say one more, once more. Okay, cool. So uh, all in one, I have no idea what it means, but we're gonna test it. We have the editor, we have presets, panoramic scrolling capture, grab text. Oh, grab text is cool. So it's, uh, we'll, we'll see that a little bit later. Cool, so for all in one, preview in editor, uh, that's after capture, copy to clipboard, yes. Five second delay, no, capture cursor, yes or no. So we say capture. And immediately it goes uh, with us, uh, it goes into two modes. First of all is the window capture, which it tries to identify what is the window. It does much better job at it than everybody else. It has a crosshair and a magnifier that allows you to be super precise with your screenshot taking. And then when you drag and drop, uh, it doesn't highlight, but it shows this frame and the magnifier, which allows you to fine tune the controls. Okay, and now it lets you to select, lets you select uh, capture image or video or panoramic scrolling image, whatever it means at the moment. Mm, got it. And start, and then you kind of drag it or something. I, 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 should you be able to scroll the content to the selected area? I don't know what it means. Scroll the content. Let's restart. Start begin capture. This folder is empty. I don't know what it means. Okay, stop. And uh, it didn't do anything for us. Well, let's try it again. Capture, capture region. It's very heavy on my mouse. When I drag and drop, it kind of tries to stick to stuff and you kind of feel it like it's heavy. Okay, so we go to the editor over here, and what do we have? We have a bunch of tools that had predetermined uh, some of the settings for us. So basically, an arrow tool, which I try to drag and drop, and it doesn't work. Let me take a bigger screenshot. Seems that the editor here is pretty big. Okay, so I take this, and I drag and drop it. Can I drag and drop? No, I cannot. It, it has a library over here, properties. What would we, the properties give us? Theme, basic, industrial. Okay. And uh, so I select and then I go like this. So this is the industrial and this is the basic. We can select the theme. You can change the color. Okay, so there's an arrow shadow uh, direction, which is super nice, what's in the middle. So basically those things that were predetermined for us are already here. Uh, you can select the width, just need to select the tool. Uh, width, opacity, start size. And can I, can I bend it? Can I bend the arrow? Bezier curve, all right, there's the Bezier curve. That allows me to bend the arrow into this uh, nice shape. Okay, opacity, let's make it uh, opaque, let's make it uh, smooth. Okay, fantastic. So we have the favorites window, we have the arrow window, do we have? Control two is an arrow. Let's say text, control three, control three. I do text like here, and I have the font size option in two places. Line wide, uh, yeah. So this is like a a, um, a a way for us to distinguish text. Put an outline on it. 
which is super nice. Uh, so the outline color can be modified, for example, like this, uh, which is not, not bad at all. And there are all of those predetermined ways of doing it, and you can have it in two ways. So in advanced options, uh, we change the style, we change the padding of the text itself, but what about the frame? Is there a frame around the text? Is there a frame text? No, it's just text. So when we click away, it's, uh, it's just text. And this is the padding of the text itself. Okay, uh, call out. Uh, let's see, uh, this is a call out, font size, arrow style, arrow, we control the arrow, and we control the opacity of the whole thing. Do we have a border? Uh, do we have a border? No, we do not have a border around the whole thing, or do we? Okay, like this, font size real. And we can change the color of what's on the inside and the shape of it. Uh, so this is this is pretty good, pretty good. But um, hmm. where's the square text? Okay, this is my text, but uh, is there a border? No border. Okay, let's see a shape. So this is the shape, and the shape can have uh, corners, which we do not control the radius of. They can be uh, of this sort. Can we type inside them? If I right click it, nothing happens. And this is the outline, so let's see the red one. Okay, so the outline actually creates a border. And on this one, that's, uh, yeah, so we have a border. My mistake, I just did not realize that, uh, yeah. So we do have a border, which is really good. And the thickness of the border, I guess, uh, goes like this. A lot of presets, which I like, but do not too much. Uh, stamps, just basic stuff that you can resize. Fill. Okay, a uh, little bit of editing, as I see. Uh, move uh, things around, uh, which is good. Selection. What can I do with selection? Can I? Yeah, I can copy-paste selection which is really good, uh, and we, you can, we can choose all kind of styles of selection. Is there a, uh, a automatic one? There is none, okay, that's cool. Still, uh, then what we have, we have blur. Blur allows, let's go back to normal, <laughs> normal view. Okay, I want to obscure something, right? So I'm going to blur, blur. there is a sensitive information, so this is the blur, which is really good. Simplify your images, uh, keep your content up to date, got it. Okay, I want to simplify this. I'll, I'll simplify what it means for us. Quick style, oh, I heard about that one. Feel with red, whatever it means. Okay, so auto simplify on. All oh, right, I remember this one. It's when you want to have an outline. Yeah, don't ask me again, turn off, yes. I remember this thing, Simplify Tool. Uh, magic Wand allows you selecting stuff. Uh, I'm dating selection, so it just selects the stuff automatically. And uh, it's just, uh, just, well, it's very similar to editing tools. We have crop, cut out, whatever that means. All right, you can just cut out. <laughs> Okay, pen is just for drawing. It's good that it's hidden. It's not in the defaults over here. Line, let's see if you hold shift, the line are straight. Highlighter, like anything else. Uh, yeah, with some default defaults. Very, very frequently used too. Steps, one, two, three, four. I like the shapes. The shapes are fantastic. Uh, yes, four types of shapes and you can modify them uh, a lot. And the eraser, can we drag and drop the eraser? Oh no, it just erases the image. And magnify, got it. Yeah, uh, this is the magnify. Yeah, very good. And we can control what kind of magnify that is. Uh, right, so 
image from template video from image capture library. So we have ourselves this in the library. We can browse the library. Here, I'll go to clipboard with this and I can put a copy paste it uh, into text, which is fantastic. Uh, what else we had there? Uh, YouTube, Dropbox, Camtasia, clipboard, FTP, you know, so all the good stuff. So, editor preferences let's see editor preferences show one click editor workspace colors decent decent right so here is a, an interesting thing so we have the editor right that we open somehow from here what is the right click open capture window open snagit editor snagit one click what uh, whatever this means i don't know right so the when you open the editor, all of the screen space is lost. You see, uh, maybe it's not a good example. So I will take another screenshot. We'll take an image and it's also uh, grabbing text. So let's try to do that. Okay, grabbing text. And this is the OCR portion of it. Okay. So there it grabbed all of it and I copy can copy all uh, into my clipboard and everything. Uh, I cannot do it unattended. I cannot do it without taking the screenshot itself. So I need to still see it open here in front of me on my screen. Um, uh, one minute. So uh, it has very, very interesting features that allow you to, uh, to capture stuff, right? Copy to clipboard, preview and editor, for example, if I just want to copy paste it real fast. Uh, I cannot annotate on the screen itself. I need to open it in editor before I start doing things like rectangles and shapes. And uh, what is it? It's control five, right? So control four is according to position. So that's going to be control one, control two, control three and so on. So control five is going to be shapes and the default shape is the last one I used, but here it is. And if you ever saw a frame that looks like this, you see this little shadow, this is people uh, using, and also for the same for arrow, for the arrow. This is people using the defaults and snag it. Okay, usually our companies pay for snag it and this is how it looks like. And uh, overall, it is very, very decent. Now for the uh, capture of uh, well, videos, I am not, I'm not really sure. Oh, video recorded terminated unexpectedly. Okay, can I resize it live? Yes. Okay, it, it cannot record because probably something is wrong. But yeah, uh, the recording is also decent. Uh, it allows you, I think it allows you to move on screen. And also you have presets, for example, uh, so let's create a new preset. And we can see, for example, preview in editor, no, uh, copy to clipboard, capture cursor, yes. And then uh, I want to uh, grab text and I have to preview it in editor, you see that one? And then copy to clipboard while I'm doing that. Okay, uh, there are all kinds of uh, editing, uh, well, uh, what is called features, right, uh, that uh, are added to the capture itself. So, for example, edges, preview and editor. We can do this, and then we see the torn edge. Can I do it here? Can I change it already now after I took the screenshot or after, for example, this one? create video, duplicate, delete, thumbnail size. Can I apply, can I apply this filter? Canvas color, resize image, new apply template. Apply template, what it means. Basically uh, editing, uh, yeah. So I cannot do it post factum. I cannot have the same variation of this image with, um, uh, with the edges, right? Or can I? I can, here it is. Here's the border and here's the opacity trick, filters for coloring, very good, uh, actually, not bad at all. Not bad at all. We have uh, sharpening and everything. So very decent editor. 
a lot of image editing uh, features are included in this product. So it definitely gives you a lot of capabilities. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that captures the gist of it. So let's recap. This was a cool one. So initial configuration doesn't give you that much on the initial configuration. You can, you can dive into it later once you know everything that you need to know, but it's a little bit not intuitive, unintuitive. Uh, specifically, things like those presets over here that are kind of hidden from you, and I think it might be inconvenient for, you, for new users, but new users would not be able to use it. The mandatory editor for OCR doesn't matter because how it takes OCR images, uh, I do. Uh, but uh, yeah, basically you have region and panoramic window and whatever, multiple area, clipboard, freehand, object, everything exists here. You have a time delay and you can capture the cursor or not. So basically everything is here. The video would not be, wasn't, well, we could not really uh, test it properly. I believe that maybe the video uh, has uh, the functionality uh, for Oh, okay, we need to click on that uh, before it starts capturing. Can I resize it now? Minimize recording toolbar. No, I cannot resize or pan and zoom. So I need to pan and zoom the window itself. Uh, resume and then stop. Okay, and this is our editor with everything. Yeah, that's normal. So a lot of extra features, basically all of them. Probably when I export it, I can file export it to uh, or maybe i can save it as and it has only mp4 somewhere there should be a gif export i do not believe that they would not include the gif option uh in here but who knows right who knows but uh, let's say uh, that we are actually able to export the screenshots uh, and uh, the GIFs from this software as well, but uh, I didn't see it so far. But I trust the tool to be big enough to actually uh, do it, maybe not in a straightforward manner. The capturing screenshots, uh, we can tie it to specific keys, right? And it makes it a little bit faster, right? So uh, start capture, whatever it means. No, right, it's the last one. So somewhere, somewhere in the software, you can uh, select the whole, those hotkeys, okay? And that's going to be video, last capture, and going to be art uh, A, just because, art A, okay? Yeah, and you need to go and select the image all in one and we are actually going to do alt a and would it react to us at all not at all well it doesn't matter really but uh, yeah if you do the hotkeys this drags a little bit slow for me and uh, while it has the magnifier and everything else it just feels heavy it feels heavy it's just not 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 snappy enough uh, not like others i'm comparing it to others uh, but that, other than that, it's fine. It saves all of your screenshots to the same place. And editing is very decent, but bulky. You cannot really uh, edit really quickly unless you just do frames, text, and arrows really fast. Uh, but still, you need to select them and then drag them on a screen. And our presets on the right and the left, it's just a lot of distraction. But it gives everything that you need. In terms of exporting, it's perfect. It's all good there. Speed, uh, if you need to use it on a daily basis, this is not the fastest option, but among the fastest one. It's, it's really good. I understand why companies would pay a lot of license money for Snagit. Uh, it, it, it has everything. Is it perfect? No, not at all. It is bulky and heavy, and you feel it everywhere. The screen space that is wasted on all of the extra stuff that you never use, and uh, it's just, you know, you need to decide, are you image editing software, or are you browsing software, uh, I mean, at a given moment, right, or are you a, a, like a quick publishing software, what, there's too much in it uh, that just 
confuses people and they don't see all of those options. I understand why uh, new people would refrain from using it or not open it as often as a professional would just because it's so bulky. But anyways, uh, is it recommended? I would recommend using it uh, for those that uh, have the money to spend and uh, they need extra features that it provides. If you are just taking screenshots and doing quick annotations uh, on them, thing. You don't need to buy the software at all uh, because there are just cheap options or, and sorry, free options for you. If you're going to do it professionally, sharing folders and uh, using all kinds of corporate uh, file management and everything, of course, this is the tool. No, no other tool would do it for you. But for personal screenshot sharing, just quick email in Gmail or something, you know, paste some screenshot to Facebook or whatever. This is not the tool to use. It's, uh, it's too heavy for that and it has too many features and it's too slow and bulky and uh, it's an overkill. Definitely not a beginner tool. Okay, uh, that concludes our video. It's a very big tool, so a very big video. So I'll see you in the next.